wind down the season of Advent and transition into the season of Christmas, it is indeed a great blessing for all of us to continue to be mindful and thoughtful of the purpose of Advent and certainly the uh, ways in which over the last several weeks we've been preaching and teaching and talking about uh, Advent as a time of not only preparation but awakening that in many respects the opportunity that this season has afforded us uh, is one that allows us to awaken to the many ways in which God is present uh, with us, among us, and active uh, in a time where we find uh, the, the use of God to be quite problematic by so many. Uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for us to be reminded that not only is uh, God with us and God is present with us, but God is active among us. And uh, if you feel the way I feel, oh, I'm so glad God is active among us. God is at work in your life and at work in the lives of the people behind you and next to you and around you. And uh, if God is at work, then how many of you know there's no weapon that's formed against us will ever be able to prosper? And so uh, this particular passage of scripture is uh, given to us the gospel according to Matthew. Matthew, one of the uh, original 12 disciples, Matthew was a tax collector, uh, meaning that he was one of these IRS agents out here, amen, that would go around and cheat his own people on behalf of the government. Uh, and he had such a radical encounter with Jesus that Matthew walked away from his profession and spent the rest of his life uh, recording and capturing his eyewitness account of the work and ministry of Jesus and connected it to his cultural background as a Jew. And uh, it reminds us of uh, this one truth that no matter who you are, God always finds you where you are. Yes. That God is not, although out of time, God is always in time with us. That God does not pull us out of our experience in order for us to be found by God. But God will get all down in your stuff and make such a convincing uh, manifestation and presence in your life that you will walk away literally from the things you thought you could not live without to pursue a life with God. God will then make your life a better version of the life you thought you had without God. Do I have a witness in here today? Amen. And so this is part and parcel of what we are excited about, that Christmas, more than anything else, is a powerful expression of who, what, why, and how God is here with us. Let's turn our attention into the biblical text, Matthew chapter number 1. Verse number 18, I like this particular expression and witness of the birth of Jesus. Uh, it, it, it gives us a little bit of the pre-work that took place before Jesus got here, uh, which again just keeps reminding me and you and us that God, as our Tenerna drama showed us, <laughs> God makes lots of preparations before God shows up in our lives. Man, and usually we only sense God is present when God overwhelms our senses. But how many know God has a plan? God is working behind the scenes. What a blessing. Verse number 18. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When Jesus' mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they had live together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a righteous man, amen, uh, what a good man, amen. Who's that? Uh, who's that? Salt and pepper, what a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. Oh, man. You know, you grow up and you don't ever think you would date yourself. You just laugh at the old people. <laughs> You talk about Sly Stone and the, he's so old. Then I'm saying salt and pepper. And <laughs> some of y'all is like, salt and pepper? Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man 
and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, plan to dismiss her quietly. It's fascinating, the culture of his day gave Joseph some options because he found out his soon-to-be wife had popped up pregnant. Now, even though he's described as a good man, he found himself still within his good man rights to divorce or even in some respects her life was at stake because the ways in which women were considered property back then uh, because she was pregnant while they were engaged she could have had her stoned he could have had all kind of things happening to her uh, and it, it, you know as I read this <clears throat> it reminds me that you can be a good person carrying out uh, normative cultural laws and God will still have to interrupt you to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So all us who believe in law and order, just remember, amen, that God's law and God's order is never bound by man's law and man's order. But when God get ready to do something powerful, sometimes God has to, as it happened to Joseph, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Now, I got to tell you, if I got a dream with an angel telling me that my firstborn was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Me and Sharice would have a long conversation. Mm -hmm. I just want us to appreciate what Joseph was being asked to consider up in here. Amen. Mm -hmm. She will bear a son and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Man, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. So we're going to spend the time of our preaching uh, centered around this topic, awakening to Emmanuel. Awakening to Emmanuel. God bless the word that has been read for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide this word in our hearts so we will not sin against you and allow the power of your spirit that makes preaching and teaching easy may it rest upon me and the hearers of your word. We'll say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. Why don't you give your neighbor a quick high five and tell him God is with us. Tell him that God is with us. All across the world, the countdown is on. Wednesday will indeed be uh, a global celebration, particularly by those who follow uh, Jesus, who name Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the, the object of our worship, the, the, the paradigm of our uh, life, and, and certainly the one who has redeemed us from our worst conditions, our worst moments. This Jesus will be celebrated all across the world on Wednesday, the day that is called Christmas. And while there is always a parallel celebration of Christmas, that takes place in societies and cultural spaces, na nations and uh, economies. It is always important for us as Christ followers to remember that Christmas has a unique significance for us. For it is indeed a time when the church has set aside in its annual calendar a a day, a season, a, a, a week 
to remind ourselves that Jesus did indeed come to the earth. It's important for us to feel comfortable at least saying or being told or, or, or embracing that Jesus was not literally born on December 25th. Amen. You can save yourself the History Channel uh, expose that they'll put out there to make you think that your faith is not reliable because December 21st was not the actual birth date of Jesus as October 4th is mine or whatever date yours is, that the significance is not necessarily in that day about the date more than it is about the why. It is the church's goal through the last millennia to ensure that we have a good memory about Jesus coming to the world. Because if you and I forget that Jesus really did come, then our participation in not just these holidays, but in the world in general, could lose its overarching telos and purpose. I mean, can you imagine how different our lives would be if we really had no consciousness of Jesus? That there are people who, in many respects, question the validity of faith and, and what real uh, 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 benefit does it bring to our lives, all the ways in which religion, particularly Christian religion, has been used as a tool of the oppressor and all these different things. And folks have all these descriptions about, uh, though valid, they may be the misuse of faith. But I also think there are a few witnesses who have born uh, 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 a life of examples that can talk about that if it had not been for God on my side, like, you know, this is not some mystery to me. I mean, I know I got a PhD, a master's degree. I know that I have a business. I know that I got a family, a boo. I got a nice bank account. I got a great profession and a great career. But there are certain things that require the radical inbreaking of God in my life. That all of these things that I have accumulated are actually now repositioned in light of the true God coming into my reality and making a difference. That this truth that God is with us has so much at stake that it is, you know, catastrophic to, to, to leave it behind, to, to minimize it, to make it just another one of these myths out here that work for different times and places. I mean, part, part of what the early church was attempting to do, even as it was existing within the Roman Empire, was attempting to ensure that while they existed in a post, pre, or anti-Christ culture, they had the ability to remember that Jesus has come, that Jesus is here, and that Jesus will come again. Uh, you ought to, you know, be a little grateful that Jesus has come in your life. Jesus is here, and that Jesus will keep coming by to see about you again and again. Can I get one more again up in here today? You know, the Roman Empire, as they conquered people, groups, and nations, they had this practice of actually absorbing everybody's religion, meaning they would allow them to keep worshiping whoever they wanted to worship. The Roman Empire was like, we don't care about you worship we do care about these taxes though amen so you pay your taxes man you give caesar what caesars do but you know in their mind they say you know if we conquer this empire you can keep worshiping who you worship if you conquer this empire you can keep worshiping who you worship because we want everybody in the roman empire to worship all of the gods just in case one of your gods is the true god we don't want that God upset with our empire. 
And so throughout the, the winter solstice, if you will, uh, the time in which we are now celebrating Christmas, the early church began to observe the ways in which the Romans would choose an enemy or a prisoner and force them to engage in all kinds of wicked behavior. They would experience widespread intoxication and they would go from house to house while singing in the nude and uh, they would engage in assaults of physical and sexual natures. They would have over the top debauchery and it was allowed to happen just during this week of winter solstice. And they were paying homage to the Lord of misrule. And so as the Christians are watching this, the early church, they saw that at the end of the week-long celebration, they would kill this prisoner that they captured to engage in all of these things at the end of the week as a way of sacrificing and absolving themselves of all of the things that they had done. It's kind of like The Purge. I don't know if many of y'all seen the movie The Purge where, you know, they, they, in the movie they let you just do uh, whatever you want to do for one day. And, it, you know, it's like you save it all up for one day and you just get it all out. And then you got to go back to, you know, acting right. Amen. Well, well, back then they, they had these practices and they would do it during the winter sol solstice. And as Christianity began to spread throughout the empire, they were attempting as Christians given the power of festivals and celebrations in the Roman culture to find ways to redeem some of these practices and set aside days to actually describe and remind themselves that we are not paying homage to a Lord of misrule. We are here to celebrate the coming and the radical embreaking of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. That, that there is a, a, a need to ensure that the people living in a culture that was anti-Christ had practices that would remind them that while you go through your life in this culture, don't you forget who you are. And don't you forget whose you are. And don't you dare forget how the God of all history stepped out of eternity to spend time with you and I to remind us that I am with you always. Ooh, I don't know if, if it hits you the way it hits me, but, but I, I feel like running all around the room when I really sit down and think of this truth that God is with us. I mean that God, the creator of heaven and earth, the, the God who created the universe, who flung the stars out into the sky, the God who created planets and systems we have not even seen yet, the God who wakes you up every morning, the God who heals your body and, 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 and gives your heart a mended uh, uh, a possibility, the God who is able to speak those things that are not as though they are this god is with you and i always that is not just christmas that god is here but every time you wake up every step you take that god is with you oh you ought to give your neighbor a high five and tell him i don't know about you but i'm glad god is with me i mean god's presence is not conditioned on what i do god says i will keep my own word and be with you come hell or high water when you're in the valley or at the mountaintop when things are working or not working when your body and your mind and your spirit are broken god says i am with you always That is the gift of Emmanuel. And sometimes you and I need an alarm clock that will go off and remind you, awaken you to all the many ways that God is with us. Because quiet as is kept, you and I are more uh, 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 apt, A-P-T, more apt than not to forget that God is with us. 
especially when you see the devil around you all the time. Uh, I don't mean to talk about the devil on the Lord's Day, but how many know sometimes the devil be hanging out with you and making you more convinced that he's with you always? Uh, in your house, at your job, on the street, on the bus, at the doctor's appointment, amen, at the bank, amen, and when you go to vote, amen, in the White House, in the mayor's house, in the governor's house, the devil's around all the time. But God wants you to know even when the devil is present, God says the devil is not more present than I am in your life. The fact that God is with us means that there is never a time when you are abandoned. That the God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think. This God can break into your family, break into your household, break into the reality of your journey and your trajectory and just give you an incarnatable experience that says I can become flesh wherever you are. You don't have to be in the church house for God to be with you. You don't have to be confessing to the priest or to the pope or to the preacher. But whenever you need God to be there, all you got to do is just look around and all of a sudden God will be right there. Uh, and, 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 and this is why some of us need to awaken to this reality that God is with us because we often have blind spots. Life will give us blind spots. I, I was, was, was on my way home from the 49er game last night. Amen. We won by a field goal as the time expired to become 12 and 3. Somebody say amen. Amen. Just a little side note. Just a way to try to, amen, make my sermon point, amen, rich with joy and celebration. And, and so as I'm driving down the freeway, amen, it's nighttime, and, 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 and me, Pastor Nisha, a few folk, we in the car, and, 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 and I'm thinking that I can merge over to the right lane, but because there was a big old black truck in my blind spot, amen, I, 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 I started to merge, but you know, good drivers, everybody say good drivers, good drivers will just take a quick glance uh, in your blind spot to make sure you have not missed something. And I'm thankful I glanced or amen, we, you have another preacher up here today maybe, amen. And, and, but but well, what it did remind me is that that thing was there the whole time but it was in my blind spot. And sometimes God needs to remind you and I that God is not absent just cause you don't see him in your periphery. But sometimes you got to just do a quick, you know, just just a quick look huh, in your blind spot. I don't know if you you just practice real quick. Just, you know, a little look, look, look to the side when 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 things start to feel like they're getting beyond control and you're trying to figure out where God is. Just keep your head on a swivel and say, by faith, I'm looking for God in my blind spot because I know God is there. Lord, I feel like preaching up in here today. Give your neighbor a quick high five and tell them God is in my blind spot. And, and this is the gift of incarnation. That God chose to come to the world. As they said, not through the prince of, of, of Egypt or through the king of the Roman Empire or, or through Herod, the, 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 the uh, magistrate. Uh, but, but, but God said, I'm going to find me a wonderful little dark-skinned Palestinian Jew. Uh, Carrie Day, she says, Jesus was not just conceived in a woman. He was conceived in the womb of a Palestinian Jewish peasant woman living under a rogue state that God shows up in history in this way. How timely for the current political economic context we find ourselves in. That God, when God shows up, does not need to show up in a high place in order to make a high impact. But God can show up anywhere God chooses. And that ought to make you happy today. Because I know we got a few folk in here who are some highbrow folks. But I think the rest of us know that God is slumming with us. That God reaching down to hang out with us is God 
taking a little bit of a step down. But I'm so glad God steps down to reach me where I am. Because in the reaching me where I am, God has a way of pulling me up and making me a better version of who I've been created to be. Do I have a witness that can say, God, pick me up? Just God being present gave me a step above the rest. God gave me what I did not know I needed. Uh, but then he gave me some legs to stand on uh, where now I can stand with anybody uh, and know that because God is with me, uh, ain't no devil in hell can do nothing to me. Uh, ain't no hater. Uh, ain't no problem. Uh, ain't no challenge uh, can match God being with me. Uh, uh, somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, come on, sit down. I, I don't know. You know, I haven't preached in a month, so I got a lot stored up. Uh, so, so the first thing that, that, that I want you to appreciate, that God shows up in our lives, uh, and we must awaken to the reality that when God shows up, God shows up as a miracle worker. Uh, somebody holler, miracle worker. Verse number 20 says that God conceived in the womb of Mary and you know as I stated all already a few times that this is quite the the most uh, it, it stretches your imagination amen now of course all of us who've been reading this our whole life it loses the 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 the, 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 the scandalous nature of what we're talking about and I know for many of us you know we become educated and we become quite you know um, uh, 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 sophisticated. Uh, uh, I won't dare call us bougie, praise God, because that would be an offense. But we certainly have, you know, believed science and all the rules of nature and law. And so we just think this is a metaphor that, of course, God could not have, you know, impregnated Mary and created the God man Jesus. That's just a metaphor. But I want you to know that there's much more at stake about you and I not believing that God could break the rules in order to achieve our salvation. I want you to think about what your life would really be reduced to if you did not believe we served a miracle working God. Mm -hmm. Tell me, just think through all the times when, you know, one plus one equal two, but you needed it to equal three. And somehow it ended up coming out to three. Just for you to be able to make it through the season you are in. I'm here to tell you that's what God does. God knows how to inject God's self and make the equation equal out in a way that blows the rules that everybody else has set up. I'm here to tell you God's a miracle worker. And if you're like me, I'm looking for a miracle. I like to expect the impossible. I like to see the invisible. Why? Because the God I serve knows how to change the rules to bring about our salvation. Oh, Merry Christmas, baby. Why? Because we serve a miracle worker. I'm talking about a miracle you couldn't do on your own. You went to the therapist, but there was more of a miracle you needed beyond the therapist and the medicine. Uh, uh, so keep taking your medicine uh, and keep going to the therapist. Uh, but how many of you know that there's a miracle uh, that God wants to do that you can't get from UC Berkeley? Uh, you can't get it from Stanford. Uh, you can't get it from what your last name is or how much money you have in the bank account. Uh, God uh, wants to do a miracle uh, and you and I got to be awoke uh, to the miracle working God. Uh, I'll give your neighbor a high five and tell him my God is a miracle worker. Oh, all right, so please, please sit down. Amen. Be, be, because I need us to be, be sophisticated at Christmas at the way. 
Uh, so, so, so the question I want you to think about, how does God being with us expand our imagination in ways that allow us to believe God works miracles? I mean, just, just, I just want you to think about it. Because some of us need an expanded imagination. Some of us get so locked into what people say is possible that we don't even think we can do what is possible. So God says, I need you to be reminded every chance you get that I am here with you and me being here means that I can expand your imagination in ways that allow you to see what is possible. Lord, help me to have an expanded imagination. In this season, when the God of all creation is being reduced to be the God of only a few, God, help me see that you are bigger than what others say. Pat yourself on the chest and say, my God is a miracle worker. Uh, the second thing then that, that, that I think the scripture lifts up is that we need to awaken to the truth that God is a promise keeper. Oh, somebody holler promise keeper. Say it again, promise keeper. Now, 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 you know, verse number 22, I think uh, 23, one of these verses, it says that all of this was done just as the prophet had foretold it would be fulfilled as spoken back in the day. And, 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 and this, is, this is something very precious, I think, for you and I who are followers of Jesus. Why? Because there is a sense that God can take a long time to keep God's word. Amen. I don't want to put you in a precarious situation, but how many of you have heard other folks say, God's taking too long. Where's God at? God, you said if I paid my tithes, if I, if I, if I fasted on Wednesday, if, if I came to church every other Sunday, if I, if I did this and did that, God, that, you know, things will work out in my favor. Anybody ever heard the, the transactional theories of how you get God to do what you want God to do? <laughs> God, I'm living right. Tell me if I live right, heaven belongs to me. It seems like I, heaven is delayed. But think about the children of Israel, the Jewish audience that Matthew is speaking to, and how this Jewish audi audience have been waiting centuries for a Messiah to come and bring them liberation from an oppressive government. Some of us who are folks of color who live with history in mind can think of the ways in which black folk and brown folk and Asian folk and indigenous folk and even some of our white brothers and sisters, all of us have a history where we have had to deal with an oppressive regime. And usually you and I are praying in real time, God, get me out of this reality. But, 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 you know, sometimes it takes longer than you wished. If you like me, I'd be like, God, get me out now. <laughs> I don't got no time for tomorrow. <laughs> Why put off for tomorrow? <laughs> what you can do today, God, I need to be out of this now. Man, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of them. I'm tired of that. I need to be out now. And God can take some time to do what we thought could be done immediately. And here in the text, the children of Israel have been waiting centuries for the Messiah. So much so, the scripture or, or the historical uh, uh, record says that during, I believe, Passover, the, 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 the Jewish uh, 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 folks would, would, would set a table at Passover and they would leave an empty seat at the table just in case the Messiah decided to show up at their table. Now you talk about some faith. Amen. You know, if you read Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about how the, the these died, Abraham, Joseph, and, and, and Hannah, and, 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 and Deborah, the, the, the hall of faith they call it in Hebrews 11, uh, that, that many of them throughout the centuries, they died believing the promise of a Messiah. 
that they did not receive the promise, but they believed that the promise was worth dying, holding on to, than living with a new expectation. And I'm here to tell you, sometimes you and I can have such a distance between what we think God said and what we are actually realizing. But if you're like me, I'm glad that we have a record where Jesus shows up to fulfill everything that God said would happen. Why? Because if God did it for them, God can certainly do it for you uh, huh, they said if he did it before he can do it again he's the same God right now that he was back then you ought to give your neighbor a high five and tell him I serve the same God amen if, if God brought them out guess what God can bring me out it may take some time but we also used to sing another song that says you can't hurry God you just have to wait. You have to trust him. Do I have anybody who knows that song? You know that song. And give him more time. Amen. Why? Because he's a God that you can't hurry. He'll be there. So don't you worry. He may not come when you want him, but he right on. Give your neighbor one more high five and tell him God is right on time. That God fulfills God's word. And what does that mean? That means that you may ask God for something yesterday. Yeah, but God says, I got a timeline that you don't even know nothing about. You think that you needed me yesterday, but God saying you really going to need me next week. So you just keep holding on to my word. God's word have I hid in my heart. So I will not sin against him. What does that mean? That means that I'm going to walk around with God's word. And whenever I start to feel like God is not holding up God's end of the bargain, I'm going to recite God's word in my mind. When I feel like the devil talking in my ear, uh, whispering, telling me I ought to leave God. Uh, I ought to walk away from all these things that I've told God I would be faithful to. Uh, that I'm going to go try my own way. Uh, I'm going to remember in my mind uh, that if God said it, uh, it's got to happen. Uh, it may take a little bit of time, uh, but I guarantee if you wait on the Lord uh, and be of good courage, uh, he will strengthen your heart. Uh, do I have any waiters in the building today? Uh, that said Christmas is taking a long time, uh, but I'm so glad uh, that God will uh, show up uh, right on time. Uh, shout yeah! This is why uh, the writers declared that Jesus uh, will be the one to save his people from their sins. Uh, what is the last thing that the writer declares? Uh, he says that Jesus will be the savior of the world. Uh, somebody holler, the savior of the world. Uh, you got to realize, child of God, uh, that the savior of the world uh, that comes during Christmas uh, does not belong to the American Empire, uh, does not belong to the evangelical church, uh, does not belong to the Catholics or the Methodists, uh, don't belong to those who live in the United States of America. Uh, but this God uh, who came to save the world uh, loves everybody uh, all over the world. Uh, Jesus loves the little children all the children of the world red and yellow black and white they're all precious in god's sight he loves them over there in mexico he loves them over there in liberia he loves them over there in thailand he loves them over there in russia he loves them over there in the hood he loves them over there in the suburbs he loves the whole world. Somebody say the whole. And he came to save, to heal, and to deliver. Somebody shout hallelujah. And 
I love how when Jesus comes, uh, they give him a nickname. Uh, they said he shall be called Mighty God. Uh, somebody holler mighty. Uh, why? Because he's mighty to save. Uh, he makes a way out of no way. Uh, they call him Everlasting Father. Uh, everlasting Mother. Uh, everlasting Parent. Uh, why? Because God will be there. Uh, even when your mother walk out on you. Uh, when your daddy leaves. Uh, God said I will be there. Uh, I'm not going nowhere. Uh, I won't abandon you. Uh, but forever and a day. Uh, I'll be right there. Uh, this is the nickname I give God. Uh, he is uh, my all in all. Uh, he is uh, my way out of no way. Uh, he has come. Uh, shout hallelujah. Come on, stand with me, everybody. That this Jesus comes to save the world from our sins. Grab the hand of someone next to you. This Jesus comes to save us from our sins. Here at The Way, we talk about sins in a much more nuanced expansive way the sins that are within us those vices and foibles those things that we know get in the way of us loving God rightly loving our neighbor rightly loving ourselves rightly these sins Jesus comes to save us from those sins the sins within us but we also talk about the sins around us. That Jesus comes to save us from those sins. Sins that speak to the social evils, the injustices, the inequities. That Jesus came to the world to save us from those sins that, I think it's Luke chapter 1, Mary has a vision, the Magnificat, where she talks about God lifting the lowly to high places, exalting every valley and bringing down every hill. The sins around us, but also the sin beyond us. It's the devil in all of the devil's business. That Jesus comes to save us so we are not left vulnerable to our enemy's devices. This Jesus has come to save people from their sins. Child of God, I want you to know today you are saved because this Jesus has come. And all we got to do is say yes to Jesus. Somebody say yes, Lord. I'm going to say it again. Yes, Lord. Lord, I walk in authority that I am being saved from my sins. I walk in authority that we are being saved from the sin around us. Oh, and we walk in authority that we are being saved from the sin beyond us. So bless the hand of the person I'm touching today. You know their needs. You know their struggles, their challenges. You know, Lord, every step that they're taking in this season of life. I pray that right where they're standing, God, you will give them what they need to be convinced that you are with them. Let the alarm clock go off, God. That lets them know you're with them in their trials and tribulations. You're with them in their trouble. You're with them in their high moments and in their challenging places. You're with them in their marriage. You're with them in their health. You're with them in their career. You're with them in their, 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 their dreams and their hopes. May they know that you are with them and you are sustaining them. So when they make it to the place of fulfillment, they will know that it was nobody but you, Lord. Now lift your hands right where you're standing. God, I pray for my own situation. 
the things that concern me. Lord, I pray that even today on the day where we are reminded that you are here. God, I pray that you remind us, Lord, that you're here with us. You're here with us, God. And I pray, God, that you will meet us right where we are, standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother or father, sister or brother, but it's me, O oh Lord. And I need you, God. We thank you for the ever-present times where you are there. So be with us, God, in the name of Jesus. You may be here today, and you want to touch and agree with some folks that as you enter into this holy week of celebration, that you'll be reminded that God keeps his promises. You'll be reminded hallelujah that God is with you or you may need to come and pray on behalf of someone else you know you just need prayer for whatever reason we got some ministers folk who know how to lead you to the throne of God come and let's pray together